Greetings, Victory Seekers. You're watching another very profound episode of Onward with Henri. I'm your host, Henri Kompen, and today I'm going to talk about facing the pressure of societal standards. Society places a tremendous amount of pressure on us. The world at large is a very competitive place, and if you want to leave your mark, you have to go above and beyond. Lately, I've noticed that many aspiring creators that I coach are trying to be anything other than themselves, and I believe that this is a huge disservice to them as individuals. Why they do this makes perfect sense. They aspire to be great. They look at those who have achieved greatness and want to follow in their footsteps. And while there's nothing wrong with having a benchmark, the fact is that trying to fit in is not how you actually get in. Being true to yourself and to your work is the only way to live up to your own expectations. In the grand scheme of things, achieving the goals you set for yourself is far more important than how the world chooses to see you. Focusing on yourself is the way to do that, and when people see you succeed on your own terms, they become enchanted by your disposition and are encouraged to do the same. What stops many people from chasing their dreams are societal demands, money, commitment, debt, risk, all these issues are very real and should not be undermined. People who choose not to pursue the incredible undertaking of a full-time comics professional are not foolish by any means. They want to make sure that they have enough money to fulfill their obligations. Not everyone in this world can afford to do what they want full-time, but there are people who find ways to make it work, and that's great. There is something important for you to consider that most people won't tell you. Whether you make $20,000 a year or $200,000 a year has nothing to do with how satisfied you'll be. It doesn't determine whether the work you're doing is valued. And most importantly, what you make won't determine whether you're a productive member of society or not. But if you're serious about making it as a full-time comics pro and currently have a safe and secure day job, get ready to make some sacrifices. Say goodbye to anything safe and secure and get ready to hustle like you've never hustled before. Be prepared to fail and to get right back up and keep going at it. And if you love it, in spite of all the challenges, keep doing it. Ultimately, your salary is just a number that will eventually be considered obsolete. You're not a slave to your yearly income. Place your value into what makes you special because what you contribute as an artist matters and it's up to you to get out there and convince the world that this is true. When I first started working in comics, I wanted to be as great as Stanley himself. This of course was an impossible feat. So instead of trying to be the next Stan Lee, I decided to devote myself to being the first Henri Kompen. For those of you who don't know, it took me six years to actually pay myself anything. It bugged me for a long time that I wasn't making as much money as my friends. The truth is that I'm still not. It worried my parents that I wasn't making the kind of money that they felt I should be making. My wife didn't have much faith in me either, and how could I blame her? It took me a long time to come to grips with the reality of my situation and to decide whether or not this was for me. I knew that I loved what I was doing and just needed to keep focusing on bettering myself and figuring out a way to actually make a living. With that on my mind, I eventually figured it out, but it wasn't an overnight thing. Like I said, this took six years. People expect things from us our whole lives. It's hard to step outside of those expectations and those demands and really ask ourselves if what we're doing is actually making us happy, despite the fact that if we do it, we may not make as much money. Besides, having lots of money can be just as difficult as having no money at all. About a month ago, I was having tea with a friend of mine who started a new management position. He made very good money, but was working 12 to 14 hour days with no end in sight. He told me that his company demanded this commitment from all of their employees. He had bags under his eyes that looked miserable. I did not envy him. To counterpoint my friend's story, last week I was on a tropical vacation with my family and came across this dude whose job was literally to sit on the beach and sign people up for water sports. He got to ride on boats and jet skis all day long. I made small talk with him and learned that he had three children and that his wife did not work. He worked six days a week to make ends meet. He wasn't overly cheerful, but you could tell that he was not miserable with his line of work, even though he probably makes a fraction of what my friend is currently making. These stories illustrate that no matter how much money you make, that alone doesn't determine the quality of satisfaction in your life. 
Sure, you may be able to afford more with higher pay, but if you're working yourself to the bone and hate your job, then what's the point? Now, I'm not saying that you can't get burned out working in comics. You absolutely will at certain points. But if there's no balance, then you're wasting away what precious time you have in this world. In order to face the pressure of societal standards, you need to realize that you're great in your own special way. Whether you write the next great American novel or not, there's no one like you who can do what you do better than you. All right, folks, we'll see you next week with a brand new brain wrinkling episode. Until then, onward to victory.